What is up, bros? Josh here, and today's video is all about Rank Sprint Season 1 and my thoughts on the new version of Rank Battles and what it means going forward for future Rank Battles. Also, I'd love to see what you guys had to say about the Rank Sprint Season in the comments below if you guys enjoyed it, if you guys didn't like it, and maybe your worries or your thoughts for this Rank Sprint style. Now, what exactly is Rank Sprint? If you didn't see my video about last week about the Rank Sprint season, you can check that out. I'll link down below. But mainly, it's a shortened version of normal Rank Battles. Now, in the past, it's always been 7 versus 7 at varying tiers all the way from Tier 5 all the way up to Tier 10. It changed almost every season. This one is now changing it up a little bit, meaning that they're going from a 7v7 to now they're doing a two-week session, about 12 days each, season one being about 12 days, season two being about 12 days, but the first season being 6v6 and the second season being 8v8, and this is the first season that they are testing divisions, which is the first time we've ever seen it. Um, it's always been something that's talked about, something that people, a lot of people have wanted in the past, um, and this is the first time we're actually seeing it. So to me, it really just looks like Wargaming is wanting to test out if divisions are a viable thing to have in ranked battles and whether it's going to work better in the 6v6 and the 8v8. Now, I ran a division the entire time throughout this, and um, I actually thought it was a lot of fun. Um, but it was really hard to kind of take this mode seriously considered. But just playing with the division, I found it to be very enjoyable. Not only was the season extremely fast and extremely short, which we'll get to in a second, but it was nice to have a person you could rely on, a person that you could just have fun with if you're talking in comms with them, and just go through this entire game mode together. I think that was a really, really nice thing. Um, now we saw that in 6v6, and, and it'll be interesting to see if it's still as fun in the 8v8. But overall, I think it was fun, and I think that's the main thing to take away from this. So it being tier 5 though, and that that's kind of the elephant in the room. Now, um, even though it was tier 5, I think in Wargaming even talked about this, that tier 5 was to just get more people to play. The last two ranked seasons have been tier 10, and that really kind of uh, excludes a lot of the player base that just doesn't have a tier 10. Pretty much everybody at this point, and even new players can get a tier 5 pretty quickly. And uh, I think it's just very uh, accessible to the vast majority of the player base. So I've, that's obviously the reason why they did tier five to really test it out and to just have kind of fun overall tiers. But tier five, just to kind of just go over that really quick and hit that elephant in the room. Tier five is a pretty bad tier for um, for ranked battles, even though this is obviously just basically a test. Um, but it's, 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 a, it's a pretty bad ranked they're pretty bad tier for ranked battles meaning there's just the ships that tend to be so good for this year are premiums and majority of these aren't really even accessible anymore what i mean by that is i use the kamikaze r they really don't sell this ship anymore or it's it's a uh, it's basically it's copies of the fujin and the kamikaze these really aren't that available as much also one of the other popular destroyers was the Gremyashi, which is not available anymore the tier 5 russian destroyer this has been one that's been talked about for being extremely strong for a long time and i think you can only get it through random super containers but uh so obviously there's some problems there also by far the best battleship that we saw was the julio caesar which is another premium ship so even though i don't want to harp too much on this tier being kind of very uh very premium heavy pretty much everything even tier six you'll get some premiums that would kind of stand out tier seven I, there's a lot of premiums that would stand out but tier five tended to be pretty heavy for premium at least tier six it seemed like the best makeup you could have was two kamikazes uh two grammys and then two caesars so none of those were normal tech trees i don't want to harp on that too much because overall i think there's a bigger picture to this um but uh i think tier five was a pretty poor tier but it was just good to get everyone in and it seemed like they actually did that because um in all the games we played i don't think we saw many names re uh, repeated and so that meant a lot of people were playing which is really good ranks ranked normally tends to be for a lot of people tends to be a pretty intimidating game mode and something that people don't really spend too much time doing. These are players that I had never seen names before. And normally when you do rank battles, you tend to see the same names and the same small group of players over and over and over. There are people I had never seen uh, their names before in all of the games I've played. So that's always a good sign. So um, good uh, pluses and minuses to just the tier itself. One, a lot of new players are checking it out. And, but downside is that the, the ship choices were pretty lacking when it came to this. I think there was basically a list of five or six ships 
um, that were kind of the top picks. And then if you didn't have those, you were kind of working at a disadvantage going into, let's say, a team that had the, then the better ships. So not only is this season extremely short time-wise with really only having, this just coming out yesterday, and only having 10 more days to do it, the, re the requirement of stars is extremely low as well. You start at rank 10, which normally in the normal season, you start at rank 23 if you've never played before. Now going forward um, in the past seasons, depending on what rank you were, you got bonus stars at the start. But rank 23 was the start of that, and this one you started at rank 10. So already that was basically cut in half. And then each one you got bonuses as you go and as you see there's a lot of irrevocables so and even having one at rank three and at rank five if you got to that you would never go back as well as a bunch of bonus stars so it took us 23 games which i thought was pretty fun and and really going forward one of the downsides that i think a lot of people and even i kind of gave it a little a little bit of grief was getting uh rank one and that the rewards were pretty lacking um Normally, you get doubloons, you get steel, you get these other rewards going for, like getting rank one, doubloons, stuff like that. This was pretty lacking, it seemed like. But when you finally got done with it and you realize kind of just how fast it 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 took and uh, how quick you, quickly you got it done, I think overall it's okay. Um, you know, uh, we played with the division and it was me hanging out with one of my friends and playing for, I think it took us about four and a half hours of just queuing uh, rank sprint that's not too bad honestly if uh, you know compared to you know it took us 23 games of small maps which means the games are going to be a quick a bit faster compared to what could normally take 150 to you know 300 games on a normal rank season for a lot of people and i think that's even on the pretty efficient side of that obviously it's going to take people a lot more um a lot more games than 23 like it took us but still i mean you know, even going 40 or 50 games, which will probably be on the high end for a lot of people. I mean, still that time to get that reward actually wasn't too bad. This was something that I even gave it a little bit of grief on. But overall, I think for the time actually spent in there and actually going in and pretty much just testing this mode on the live server, I think the rewards overall were decent um, because I think more than anything, you were just in there having fun. Now, one thing going forward on this, I found that it was kind of interesting that there was actually a pretty lack of divisions um this is something that i think a lot of people had been talking about a lot of people wish they'd add into rank battles and to actually go in and see really a, a lack of divisions in a lot of solo queue that kind of worries me a little bit because it's something that's been talked about for so long obviously they've made a requirement that one team needs to have a division both teams need to have a division for those divisions to get into queue now i did solo queue some games and in all the games i solo queued i never even saw a division I'm even watching and talking to some of my clan mates that played um all solo they ran into almost little to no divisions um, when it came to this to me it seems like a like a no-brainer to just get in with a friend and just play now i know not everyone is in with the clan or has or maybe they just play the game by themselves um but i think that is kind of one of the one of the things to really point out when going forward with this and what it means to actually rank battles in the future is that the real lack of even having the ability to but the lack of divisions was extremely low and actually surprising now i think in every one of our games um, all the 23, I think there was maybe four or five of those 20% that had more than just the one divisions. Um, in my head, you would see at least two, three divisions on each team of the six, and I would, I would feel. But really, it was basically our division versus another division, and then four solos on each side. And every game I played solo, I never once saw a division. So kind of interesting to me and i'd like to actually see if if you guys if you guys played solo if you guys played in division and if you did play solo what was the reason behind it i know a lot of people don't have like that go-to friend or maybe they just played when they could and their friend couldn't do that that tends to be also a problem with this just like clan battles is trying to line up a time not everyone has just an ability to set hey man do you want to go play uh warships for four or five hours straight a lot of people can't do that so that's what I kind of mean going forward into future rank battles is I feel like most I feel like rank battles is still going to stay a solo queuing game. Reason being is that we aren't seeing it yet. Yes, it's only a couple days into this battle, but a lot of people are already ranked out of this. And I think most people that are probably 
kind of already playing this and already playing in ranked, I feel like honestly there's just there's not I don't even know if there's the ability to just get enough people to have that. One thing I also did notice is that two people when we were queued up together, two good players, just had a massive impact on the team. There were situations where me and my div mate had five or all six of the kills when it came to a 6v6 match. That's pretty insane. There was one game where even one of our guy had a Kraken. Um, I had a couple four kill games. So I think that would be uh, that's a pretty big red flag to me is that two people having such an impact, especially with, let's say it's a division versus division um, of having one division of two good players and then one division of two bad players, you almost stand little to no chance of even winning that game. Um, now, we did only see the 6v6 version and not the 8v8 version, 8v8 version, so that could limit it down, but still in that realm of that communication and that uh, coordination of having a division like ours where we ran a pretty, I would say, a pretty quote-unquote try-hard division of Kamikaze R and Grim Yashi, again, going back to what the uh, what the kind of uh, ships that are hard to get, we ran a pretty try hard division just to see what it was like. And with that, you know, we just basically rolled a lot of other destroyers because how are you going to beat that two coordinating DDs? And I think honestly, the solo queuing of ranked battles. Now, this might be an unpopular opinion, but I think that's kind of the charm of ranked. You don't know who you're going to get. You don't know who's going to be on your team, and then you have to straight up overcome it. But a group of one person and six randoms has a much better chance of going against, let's say, one really good player than, let's say, one person and six randoms or one person and five randoms versus two really good players that are then coordinating and voice coming and stuff like that. Because even if they get into a division, regardless of outside communications, they can even use the the, the uh, conversation stuff in in game. So. Um, that's why I think, first of all, we need to look at this game mode purely as something that is fun. I think that's the biggest highlight out of this. I would love to see this kind of rank sprint be something completely separate than rank battles. Um, even call it something else. It's fun to get in there and just play with your friends, and it's fun to get in there and then get some stuff done, and even some quick rewards, because there's so much of the quote-unquote serious game modes getting slammed down our throats back to back to back to back of the normal rank battles the normal um clan battles normal rank norm, normal clan back to back to back and it's good to do something that's a bit more of a goofy thing as i said earlier when we were going against it even playing like other ships and i played even some of the tech tree ships like the nicholas um it felt like it was just something goofy to go in there and have a good time so i would love to see wargaming actually put this mode in as something we see more often two thumbs up for me it's fun it was kind of carefree and you got to just hang out with one of your friends if you wanted it to and then really it didn't affect anybody that like because there's so many irrevocable ranks and the requirement to get the stars to get rank one is so little you don't feel like you're really kind of you know it's not that that negative of an impact of of really kind of a normal ranked where that can be a lot of time and a lot of stress this is you know you could technically go 13 and 0 with the required amount of stars. And if you get a hundred percent win rate on 13 and 0, you were rank one, you were done. That's about three hours of gameplay. So I think overall, that's one of the biggest things to kind of take away. So one, I think that this overall is going to be something that we see in the future, or at least I hope we see something like this in the future of just staying as its own game mode and leaving ranked battles as its own thing. Now, what does that mean? That means the seasons in between ranked battles, the normal ones, is I hope a little bit bigger, the gaps in between that. I would love to see stuff like this thrown into the mix of just having fun with friends, having fun for, for like a couple weeks, and then giving us a little bit of a break, mixing in maybe some of the events that Wargame is throwing down, which are completely awesome and then um, giving us a little bit of a break from all that, and then doing a clan battle season, and then, you know, doing some more of this, and then doing a rank battle season, you know, let there always be something going on, but don't always make it something that's so extremely stressful and try hard, like regular clan battles and regular rank season, where then it's just people get burnt out and people do this. So 
for me, I give Rank Sprint a two thumbs up and I had a lot of fun and I'm really interested to see what you guys think about this. And, you know, kind of leaving some of the other stuff about it being tier five with premium ships and maybe the rewards being a little lackluster. But what were your thoughts in general over the entirety of the Rank Sprint? And really want some feedback um, over that because I think as a normal game mode, I think it's awesome and I'd love to see them added in while leaving the other rank battles differently because again even if they keep it at 8v8 i feel like again two people really coordinating is it's just too much control over the game and would really i think cause a lot more frustration going forward than it would solve frustration um when when having that but anyways guys that's my thoughts on rank sprit i'd really love to see what you guys think in the comments down below and i really hope you guys have an awesome day and good luck if you are still going through rank sprint hope you have some fun and go get that coal but anyways guys that's it for me hope you guys enjoyed this video remember like subscribe and i'll see you guys next time